Thank you, folks. First of all, I'd like to introduce a little bit better of our um, uh, moderator for tonight, um, Michael Sabala. He is uh, Director of Coach and Athlete Development um, for JCC's um, Thunderbird swim team. Um, and in 2017, he received the Order of Icas Medal from the U.S. Olympic Committee for coaching Katie Milley, uh, Olympic gold and bronze, med bronze medalist um, for Team USA in Rio. So we're dealing with serious stuff here. Um, Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much for being here. You can join us up here. Um, and then I'd like to introduce uh, the director of the film, Lara Stolman. Lara Stolman, please, a round of applause. <laughs> Someone who needs uh, no introduction, Mr. Coach uh, Mike McQuee. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I'm going to hand it over to Michael from here. Yeah, thanks for being here. It was it was incredible. Uh, I guess my first question is for Laura. I mean, what, why did you choose this topic, and how did you find the team? How did you find their family? So I have uh, I have three children, and one of my kids is on the spectrum. And it was really important for us, uh, for my husband and I, that he learn how to swim. And uh, I should have said my background is in film and television, and uh, so I'm, not, I'm, I'm a mom and, and um, I'm a, a filmmaker. And so I was looking for swimming lessons for my son, and I found Coach Mike and Maria and Mikey, and I met the three of them at the Raritan Bay Area YMCA, and I saw Mikey swim, and I was just so inspired uh, by how beautiful... Um, his swimming was and how positive Coach Mike and Maria were. Uh, they were just um, so refreshingly uh, positive. And as a parent um, of a child who's different, I was used to a lot of negativity actually um, and being told no, but they were saying yes. And I thought that if they could inspire me um, so much that there's they could inspire other parents as well. Uh, Coach, should I call you Coach Mike? Mike, Michael. Okay. Uh, Mike, I think we all learned a lot from you as what you bring to parenting and what you brought to the team, but what did you learn most from the other parents? Wow. Uh, what as in, most? like, what might you do with your own children or with the oh, team or what might you not do? Absolutely. I mean, getting involved with these... These young men, 80% um, of all the young men that I was with, all their fathers left when they were born when they found out they were autistic. That's a tough thing, any special needs child. Um, do you hear me now? Um, just learning, learning a different mood, what makes them tick. Just trying to, I didn't really want to be a father figure, but I guess it kind of went that way and still to this day right now. Um, I'm just proud to be associated with them. And the parents, just letting the parents know that people do care. You have to reach out and ask. If you don't ask and just put your, your child or, or daughter in a corner, you're never going to know. You have to reach out. You know, that's why we're all there. It's, it's not the best swimmer, the best uh, a bowler, whatever it may be. What it's about is other parents are getting to know other parents with special needs children. Your IEP, his IEP, her IEP, everything is different. It's just one big network, and you can learn so much. That's what I noticed. I, um, I grew up swimming, so I started swimming when I was six. I'm 36, um, and 30 years later, some of my parents' best friends are those that they met when I was a little kid through the sport, and I was just wondering if, I mean, we could see some of those friendships beginning or blossoming. I mean, that's quite exciting, so... For, to hear there. you say that, I mean, it resonates. Absolutely. Um, Laura, could you talk a little bit about the moment where Robbie's mom talks to him and explains or tries to help him understand um, his diagnosis and what it was like to maybe think about including that or not including it in the film? Sure. I, uh, when I met Rosa, she told me uh, what she says in the film, which was, she wanted him to be on the team so that she could find a way to tell him. Um, he was 16 when we were filming and uh, spending more time um, 
on his own without his mom, um, without a member of his family to help him. And she thought it was important that he be able to advocate for himself. And uh, so, and he was on a couple of other teams, so he, he was busy. He, for a lot of the kids that were on the Hammerheads, they couldn't be on any other team. They weren't welcome on any other team, but Robbie was on his high school team. He was on the uh, Scarlet team that you saw. Um, he didn't need to be on the Hammerheads, but that was the reason why he was there. She really thought it was important that he understand who he was. Uh, and you know how we got to that scene was, I asked her, uh, is it okay if I film you know, the moment when you're ready to talk to him? And uh, she said yes. Uh, and we did, a, we did a lot of stopping and starting during that scene. And she asked for my help. Um, and uh, I, I, f I think maybe I was more uncomfortable before the scene happened than after. I think that what happened in the scene was very satisfying for everybody. Um, the way Robbie reacted, I mean, I think was made us all feel like this was important and um, you know needs to be in the film. No, that's great, thank you. Mike, uh, last question and then we'll take questions from the audience. You used the word unreal twice, I think, in the film. Twice that I counted. Okay. Um, <laughs> when you used that word um, with respect to the, to the swimmers, to the to the boys, what does it mean to you? It's unreal. <laughs> I mean, what the film was unbelievable. But before Lara came along to do what she did, which is un incredible, uh, all seventeen kids except two could swim twenty five meters. We taught these young men how to swim, and we weren't supposed to. Uh, it was like enhanced the strokes. I started taking lessons I got on YouTube. I'd never been a, a swimmer. Just started learning things on my own. I said, we're gonna teach these kids to swim. If they drown, it's not gonna be because we didn't try. You know, we don't want these kids drowning. 90% of all autistic kids love water. They'll find their way to it, and they drowned. And we didn't want that happening. And unreal is to see where, where they came from. I mean, scream was, everybody jump in the water. Scream and holler, Kelvin just, just throwing fits. Not wanted to. You didn't see a lot of scenes us holding Kelvin, talking to Kelvin, taking him back in the back. Um, I mean, it was a lot. And then to finally put it all together, it was unreal what we did. You know, it, it's not just me. It was all the other coaches involved, too. I mean, they did a tremendous job. Tremendous job. Yeah, it's fantastic. Michael, as we hand it over to the audience, I actually wanted to throw it back at you for a moment and uh, get some of your reflections on the film. This is your first time seeing it. Yeah, I've never seen it before. No, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, in so many ways, it's like any other swim team. They're like any other kids or young adults. Um, but then there, yeah, there are so many things that are very special. Um, maybe, Mike, you can comment on this, and Laura as well. But I, I just thought it was so nice. Um, for the parents and the families to have an experience um, so similar, yet, I mean, it's different because it's very special, um, but similar to the experience that many other families are having, whether their children have been diagnosed with a difference or a disability or not. Um, they get to come together, they get to be parents of kids who are on a team, they get to travel, they win, they lose, they get upset when they get disqualified, um, all those things. And I think that's yeah. really nice. I, I think that this these are parents who very for human. the human. Maybe nice isn't the right word. It's very human. It's very I live in the suburbs in New Jersey and um, sports are so important. Uh, if you have children, it's very important in the social life of the community. And um, it's the way uh, families meet one another and the way kids um, meet one another and if your child is different then you can be very the child is isolated and the family's isolated too and what happened on this team was uh, the parents got to meet one another and they got that experience of um, normalcy that the parents of typical you know kids take for granted um, but you see that you know in the film that they really appreciated meeting one another and they learned from one another and there were benefits and 
Mikey's experience with school um, influenced uh, Robbie's uh, trajectory in a good way because the moms got to, to know each other and they were able to help each other and share information. And they, in, in the summer games, they go away for three, gate, uh, three days at the College of New Jersey. So it's the first time that most of all these young men and women go away by, by themselves. They stay in dorms, college dorms. Uh, it's a good experience for them, you know, and they enjoyed it. Yeah, super impressive, yeah. super great. So I'll make the rounds here. We'll go up. Well, we'll we got a microphone. we will going around. You can, oh, you can uh, rest, reflect. I'll take one over here. Uh, this question's for Coach Mike. Um, is Mikey still working at the zoo? Uh, Michael would probably be going back. This summer we had some good news. Um, we showed the film in Marlboro, was it? Or the Mammoth Film Festival. The Mammoth Film Festival, uh, Brent Spencer, the zoo director at Turtleback Zoo, came there to the film festival. Question answering, just like this right here. They asked Michael, where do you see yourself in, in five years? He says, I want to work at the Miami Zoo in the chimpanzee sanctuary. Brent was sitting in the audience. After the show, he came up and says, Michael, I thought you were going to come back and work with me next year. He goes, well, maybe. <laughs> Brent emailed Lara but two days later and told Lara that, uh, listen, if I understand that Mike and Maria have family in Miami, and if Michael wants to go to Miami, I used to work at the Miami Zoo. I'll make it happen for you. All we ever hear is people talk, talk, talk. Two days later, we get an email. He calls me up and says, when are you guys going to Miami? So this summer, Michael has the opportunity to go to Miami and go behind the scenes and work with the apes and then probably come back after I retire in a couple of years, he's going to work at the Turtleback Zoo full-time next year. Or this year. I'm sorry, this year. Hi. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about Robbie's uh, leadership qualities and how impressive that was and how great you brought that out in the film by showing him with the Hammerhead team with the younger version of the Hammerheads team, I guess that... It's what it was working them out and stuff. And then Correct. also on his actual high school team being the captain and having the respect of the, I guess you called the, the neurotypical kids. And, uh, you know, that was just really impressive and, and beautiful to see. Thank you. Yeah, I think actually that um, the, his emergence as a leader happened on the hammerheads and, you know, his, right. his, team, um, his swim team coach in high school said, you know, it was this year that it really came to fruition. And that was the year after his experience being on the Hammerheads. So uh, it was a really nice stepping stone, um, that team, uh, for, you know, more a more inclusive experience for a number of the kids. You know, I realized looking at the numbers, I have to change the credits. It's actually seven kids from the team went on to swim with typical peers because we're adding Mikey now. Right. Mikey is now swimming with the Scarlet team, which you saw Robbie was swimming with earlier. I, I just want to make a comment about the team at Scarlet. So you saw Tom Speedling in the film. He's um, co-owner, head coach there. But it's the home club of Olympic gold medalist Rebecca Sony. And um, they're known nationally for how much hard work they do. So I'd, I'd just like to throw a little credit um, Tom's way into Scarlett's way because the, the amount of swimming that club does probably supersedes any other club in America. They swim five hours on Sundays and they swim 20,000 meters and they'll do it all butterfly. Six days a week. Yeah, they're, they're in, intense. Maybe it might be a little too much. Um, they get incredible results. Um, I've had the privilege of coaching some of their swimmers in college. So kids are so lucky to be there and to be on that, in that club. And um, I think it might have been e easier for him with the Hammerheads or his high school team because he had been, a par been part of a club team that's uh, so determined and so hardworking. Well, I would, I would like to, to give a little credit too that someone reached out to us when he first uh, heard about us is USA uh, Butterfly, Tom Luxing, USA National Champ is sitting right there. Stand up. Tom was, um, Tom was work, working in Washington, D.C. for a nonprofit uh, autism organization. And he reached out to, to Lara and myself and came and talked to, our, talked to our kids, which is a big thing. And my son really took to Tom. Tom's been over a couple times talking to Mikey. And it was pretty much an inspiration. And I'd like to thank him, young men like this, 
that do what he does. I mean, it's unbelievable. And he worked with us, Scarlett. He swam at Scarlett four years ago. Uh, but he's an unreal man, and we need more people like that that want to step up and help young guys and girls. So thanks, Tom. I'm embarrassed him now, but <laughs> it's just Tom really is the 2013 <laughs> national champion in the 200 meter butterfly. It's quite the upset, quite the race. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, question is a beautiful, inspiring film. Thank you. Um, I was shocked by the statistics in the beginning about New Jersey being the state with the highest autism and one in 26. It's even higher. Boys. Have you, have either Mike no. or Laura, like, researched, or is there any? So, um, so th just to be a little bit more specific, not every state was included. This was a CDC study, the most recent CDC study, um, updated last year. Uh, and not every state was included. Uh, however, the experts, you know, believe that it's quite accurate. And we've been working closely with Autism New Jersey, actually, and they're, you know, nationally known for their research and advocacy. Uh, at every screening we are asked, why is that? Why, you know, are the, is the rate so high in New Jersey? And I think it's safe to say the generally accepted answer is that New Jersey's been known for a number of years for having um, internationally known, actually, schools um, for early childhood intervention and young people on the spectrum. and. Folks move there to access services. It's also a very highly populated state. It's in, we're in the tri-state area. Uh, so all of those factors are combined. Hi. Um, first, I just wanted to thank everyone involved in bringing this uh, film here. Uh, I'm I'm Caitlin, and I run the special needs swim program here. So it's really important, and I'm really, I'm really happy and glad that you brought this to us. Um, I have a question for Mike and Lara about, uh, from a parent's point of view, uh, the experience Robbie had learning about his disability more towards his adult life rather than as a child. Do you feel? Um, do you feel like that impacted him in a positive way or that waiting was the wrong thing to do? You know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we have different we have different takes on it. You know, every individual is different. Um, I think that one of the reasons why it took a while for um, Rosa to have that conversation with Robbie was she, her instinct was that he wouldn't understand really um, fully what she was trying to explain. And, um, so uh, every, every child is different. <laughs> every individual on the spectrum is different. So um, I think that he did understand, but part of you know, his symptoms of autism are that it's hard for him to articulate things. Uh, and you know, in that my take on that scene where he says, where she asks him, "Do you know what autism is?" and he says, "No," he, he may not have been able to articulate that he knows that he can define it. But then later, when she he says, "I can handle it," I think that that's an acknowledgement that he does understand. Yeah, um, um, I think I think Robert should have been probably told maybe a little bit younger than what he was. Um, Robert's going through a lot with his mom and father. And uh, his dad really didn't want to accept Robert as being autistic. And that's, that's the bottom line, why, why Robbie really never knew. And Rosa never would tell him. And now it's, it, it's hard for him. I mean, I talked to Robert two days ago. And it's, he still has a hard time with it, you know. And uh, I, I just don't think it was right. I think it was way too long. Uh um, so in the Special Olympics USA Games, um, um, Mike, um, Michael won two gold medals, one silver and one bronze. Which, um, which, which strokes did, um, he win those medals in? Like, do you remember? Of course I remember. <laughs> 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 
I couldn't stop crying. Um, Michael won the gold. He was the anchor for the uh, 4x50 relay, and he was the anchor for the uh, 4x50 medley. He, got, he lost the gold medal to another young man, um, Colin, Colin Day from New Jersey. I trained Colin against with Michael for the Nationals. He beat Michael by one thousandth of a second. You couldn't even tell who touched. And then Michael won the, uh, the bronze medal in the, uh, the backstroke. He should have won. He swam a 29 in the, pre in the prelims, and he swam a 33 in the, in the uh, individual. I mean, at the very end for the championship. So if he would have swam that, he would have won it. We have time for two more questions. Hi. All three of you have spoken highly of the relationships that the parents and the athletes have developed as a result of being on the swim team. Uh, for the director, I'm just curious, during your editing process or during your creating the film, um, why did you choose not to include uh, interviews with the athletes? Because their perspective would be um, an enhancement to the film, I think. Uh, so we did, you know, we have some uh, interview sections, clips with Mikey and, uh, and Robbie. Uh, Calvin couldn't really sit for an interview, actually. Um, so we use, you know, pit parts of the scenes that he's in um, to, uh, to hear from him. Um, and it was um, really about striking a balance, I think, between hearing from parents and hearing from, from the kids. And we put as much of the boys in there as we could, actually. Uh, it, was hard to, it was hard just to focus on the three boys, I have to say. You know, the kid, the, there were 17 on the team. One female, who you meet at the beginning, Jade, and the rest were boys, male. and. Um, they were all interesting and fascinating. And I couldn't include you know, th them all, though, because that would not be as satisfying, I think, of a story. Um, so that was difficult, too. We have one last question down here. All right, so do the like boys who are like in the movie do like um Mikey and Robert do they like still see each other and hang out like out of like now yeah robert Robert came over about about a month ago and hung out with Mikey Robert moved he used to live probably a mile and a half away from me now he moved all the way down to Cherry Hill, so it's hard for uh, i I talk to him on a regular basis so. Folks, I want to thank the three of you, actually, thank for a wonderful conversation. Um, of course, a lot more to be said, and the con conversation can continue upstairs. Um, thanks to Matan, there's a, um, a reception in the lobby. You can find out more information there. And um, please join us uh, upstairs at 8.30. We're starting the next film here, Nisa, The Heart of Madness. So please uh, join us for that or for other films till Wednesday night. Thank, Thank you, you all for coming. Right. Help spread the word. Right. And please fill out surveys if you have them. I don't have a card with me. Okay. I came from practice upstairs, so. Okay. so you, <laughs> in shorts 10 minutes ago. Thank you so much. Yeah. The There's like a team of about 100 so kids. Oh, so much. wow. Thank you. Thank this you. one's here. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure. Yeah.